There are a lot of jobs that one can take. Most are probably shitty, some are easy, and some are hard. Ever worked an odd job? Jobs that don't have a particular profession or can't be categorized? Ever had a weird job that you can't really explain? Well, some of these jobs are definitely odd, and some even defy explanation. Tier 1. Bank Teller. Bank tellers have one of the most normal ass jobs that you can imagine. You help people that come into the bank that might want to deposit or withdraw money from their account, among other bank related duties. Not much to say about this one. Fast food worker. Another normal job that lots of people have done in their life, fast food workers make sure your burgers are juicy and your fries are crispy. It's usually a low paying job and workers have to deal with fat retarded customers whose blood sugar has dropped because they haven't had their 5 gallon bucket sized Oreo McFlurry. Thank your friendly neighborhood fast food worker. Tier 2 Doctor Doctors have the potential to save lives and help people regain their health. Being a doctor is pretty hard. It involves lots of schooling and hours of practice. Not everyone can be a doctor as it involves dealing with things that are disturbing like death, disgusting like infected assholes, and draining like long working hours. So being a doctor isn't something everyday people can do, but there still is a lot of them so that's why I think it belongs in tier 2. Uber Eats DoorDash Driver Delivering for Uber Eats or DoorDash is a job that's somewhat unconventional. Delivery drivers have been around since, like, horses have been around, but this is a little different. People that work for DoorDash and Uber Eats use an app and pretty much work for themselves. They don't have a boss and can work wherever they want, and it's all mediated through their phone. It's a more recent development in the job market. I think I can also add just regular Uber drivers as well. Again, taxis have been around forever, but Uber drivers use the app and do as many pickups as they want and as little pickups as they want. Lots of people have tried their hand at delivering food using these apps, but there are some barriers, like needing a reliable car, and if you're old and fucked up and don't know how to use technology, you're going to have a hell of a time. Overnight Security Guard Almost anyone can be an overnight security guard. Usually you just have to show up and do patrols around the location you're guarding, with the rest of your time mostly spent just sitting. You might have to call the cops if someone tries to break in, but for the most part it seems like you're just chilling. It might be hard to adjust your sleep schedule, and you also might have to acquire a guard card, which can be annoying. I think a lot of people don't really know about these jobs either, and I feel like people get these jobs and just kind of stay with them for years because they don't have to do much. Tier 3 YouTuber Influencer YouTubers and influencers are a more recent thing because when YouTube and Instagram first came out, it was purely a way for people to connect and share their lives somewhat candidly. Around maybe 2010, people were beginning to make money off YouTube videos and Instagram soon followed. Then TikTok came to the picture and people almost instantly were able to monetize their posts as the framework for monetization was already being utilized by other platforms for years. Now people are literal millionaires and sometimes multi-millionaires. They can make money from YouTube ads on their videos, ad reads from companies sponsoring their channel, and selling merch. Content creators can also make Patreons where their viewers send them money directly. You know, I fucking hate the term content creators, like, it's so vague. What content do you create, fucker? Do you sing? Do you do porn? Do you make iceberg videos? People that make YouTube videos are the gayest individuals on the face of the earth. Professional athlete. Professional athletes pretty much have to work their whole life to get to a professional level. Most if not all have played their sports since they were children. So you kind of have to get lucky that your parents enrolled you in soccer or baseball when you were young. Because if you don't play sports when you're young, you're almost guaranteed to become a crack whore. You have to be extremely physically fit to do your job, and you have to constantly keep that fitness. I mean, maybe, maybe not if you're into curling or shit like that. I mean, curling is cool though, no hate. I'm just saying that you can be a fat ass and still be a good curler. Now I could be completely wrong about that though, that's just my initial assessment. If you're into curling, let me know. Not many people can make it to a professional level, as it entails insane amounts of practice, discipline, and pressure to perform perfectly every time. Novelists Novelists write books and tell stories, but nobody reads anymore because reading's for dorks. I think people's attention spans have just been ass fucked by bias sized videos being beamed directly into their frontal cortex whenever they want. I mean a lot of people can't even stand in line at the grocery store without craning their neck down at the device. 
An author can write a variety of genres like science fiction, thrillers, children's books, nonfiction, and erotic werewolf fiction. Erotic werewolf fiction is where usually a woman fucks a guy who is also a werewolf, in case you didn't know. Do werewolves have red rockets? Oil rig worker. Oil rig workers, oil rig, oil rig, on the oil rig. Oil rig workers are probably the bluest of blue collar workers. They drill into the ground and sea floor, maintain the drills and pipes, operate heavy machinery, and probably other extremely masculine stuff like sucking each other's cock. Oil rig workers have to deal with a decent amount of risks like fires, falls from tall heights, equipment malfunctions. It's a pretty dangerous job at times. And also apparently in California, they only make around $42,000 a year, which I'm pretty sure is completely ass in California, but at least they get to suck each other's cock. Tier four, special ops soldier. When you were a kid, you might've wanted to be a Navy SEAL or Green Beret. Movies like Rambo, Act of Valor, and Sicario, and video games like Call of Duty, Battlefield, and Splinter Cell have had a massive effect on military recruiting, with the young lads wanting to be six special ops operators who kill bad guys with silenced M4s. And then they find out that you have to work extremely hard and be extremely fit to be in any sort of special ops unit. Also, they figure out that it's just a lot of sitting around waiting for shit to happen. And it's not always the action, shoot em, kill em, headshot, 1v1 me on rust 24-7. So definitely not for people who are fat or impatient, which is like 102% of America. Special Ops soldiers are deployed when the military needs something done in a more quiet and surgical manner. Also due to their high level of training, they carry out high risk operations that could look bad on the military and government if it went sideways. So definitely for the, so this job is definitely for a certain type of person. Definitely not a, not an entry level position, obviously. Craigslist Hitman Most people go on Craigslist to buy cars, bikes, toys, and other assorted objects and knickknacks. But sometimes, a motherfucker just has to die, and you don't have time, or don't want to do it yourself. So you get on the old list, and find you a killer. I don't think it's super common to see a hitman on Craigslist, but it's definitely happened. You know, a Craigslist hitman probably isn't the most skilled, so I don't know if I would hire one to kill somebody, but... I guess if you're strapped for cash and you don't have any other option, fuck it. Maybe they make a good living under everyone's noses, but who knows. I found the story of a girl who hired a hitman for herself because she wanted to kill herself, but, but couldn't do it. And it's a horrible situation, but the, the guy she hired said he tried to talk her out of it. And she said no, she still wanted to kill herself. So he killed her. And his explanation was just like, well, I mean... I tried to talk her out of it. There's there's nothing more I could do. I had to I had to kill her. You want well you want me to leave her alive? Hooker. Everyone knows what a hooker is. They SDs and perform other assorted sexual acts for money. And sometimes they'll just talk to you. If you pay them enough. I feel like hooking has actually gotten more prevalent or at least seems more prevalent in recent years because there's more of a push for an acceptance of sex work. And now it's more of a woman just doing it on their own through social media and such versus a guy pimping them out and just beating the shit out of them. It's not for everyone, but if you do it right and you're hot, you can make bang. Tier 5. Not safe for work artist. Not safe for work artists draw pretty much anything you want from Mario sucking Bowser's dick to Jill Valentine from Resident Evil getting nut blasted by Nemesis. <laughs> if you can dream it, they can draw it. I think not safe for work artists truly should get buried with full honors. I unequivocally support the troops. Not safe for work artists can do specific genres like hentai, furry, family guy, and some apparently make decent money. Imagine paying your bill drawing wolf pussies. That's the real American dream. Chicken sexer. Okay, so this one might be the most interesting job on this list, and I might make a whole video just about this one job. Let me explain. The egg industry has to know if they have a male or female chick because if it's female, it's going to be used for eggs. And if it's male, they're going to just kill it, which is fucked up, but okay. Chickens don't have dicks or pussies. They instead have a cloaca, which they shit, piss, and come out of. It's almost impossible to tell what gender a chicken is until it's matured for the average person. Chicken sexers, however, 
are able to, after long periods of practice and repetition, squeeze the chicks to expose their genitals and know what gender the chicken is right then and there with insane accuracy. It all started in the 1920s with a Nippon chick sexing school in Japan where chicken sexing was taught as a two year course. One Japanese sexer <laughs> who was visiting a class in the US sexed a total of 1400 chicks within an hour with 98% accuracy. That's one hell of a sentence. An American by the name of Ruby Sabri sexed 1100 birds in an hour with 95% accuracy. Also, like I mentioned, they have to squeeze the birds, which sometimes kills them, which is fucked up, but okay. Underwater welder. Underwater welding is one of the most dangerous jobs on this list, besides special ops soldier. If you're an underwater welder, you're working on pipelines, ships, and even nuclear reactors. Underwater welders are paid handsomely due to the high risk environment that they work in. See Delta P. Just, just look up Delta P on Google, you'll understand. You have to be good at welding and diving simultaneously while being aware of your surroundings or you could die a pretty horrific death. Odor Judge Odor Judge is one of the many jobs that I could not do. I think I'm a super smeller which is where people have a super sensitive sense of smell and that's kind of either a good thing or a bad thing for this job. Odor Judges can work for deodorant companies smelling people's armpits after they put deodorant on. They also smell people's breath, feet, and I'm assuming other body parts. I think they smell people's breath to test toothpaste, but I don't know why they'd smell feet. Maybe to test if body wash works properly, or they just have a foot fetish like myself. Dog food taster. So I guess they have to have people taste test dog food, because sometimes dogs will just eat anything. So they might not be a good gauge of what tastes good to most dogs. Dogs will sometimes not eat food if they don't like the smell. So a pet food taste tester will smell the food first, which is weird because humans sense of smell. And what we like to smell is probably super different from dogs and cats and such. I mean, my dogs have eaten severed bird wings, chomped on lizards, licked their ass, dick, licked each other's ears. I don't know if their good smell is what our good smell is. Then they put it in their mouth, chew it, and when they think they've gotten all the information they can out of it, they spit it out. So they don't actually eat it. Like imagine being full of dog food at the end of the day. Also, I've tried dog food, but it was a long time ago and I think I remember it just being dry. I don't, I don't really remember the taste. I don't think it was that bad. Um, I also tried one of those pepperoni sticks. It's like pretty much a Slim Jim for dogs. I don't, r I don't remember it being bad. I think it was actually pretty good, but it gave me diarrhea. Tier 6. Resurrectionist. The job of resurrectionist was popular in 18th and 19th century England, but started to die out in the late 1800s. For a couple hundred years, however, it was a lucrative business. Resurrectionists would dig up dead bodies and sell them to medical schools, who would normally get the bodies of executed criminals. But the judicial system became less strict, and less people were being executed. So medical schools had to resort to illegal means to obtain their corpses. Sometimes a funeral home would just bury an empty coffin and sell the body it was supposed to contain to a medical college. And as more graves were starting to get dug up, people tried to implement defensive measures to stop their loved ones from being exhumed. They would have steel bars placed over the grave, which didn't really stop the good old resurrectionists, as they would just dig down in front of the bars and then dig to the head of the coffin, crack it open like a cold yingling, and use a rope to slip the body out, which is an extremely funny image. They usually didn't take any jewelry or things like that because it was a felony to steal, but taking bodies wasn't. Crime Scene Cleanup and Body Removal Crime Scene Cleanup crews go to the aftermath of crime scenes and basically scrub the place and make it suitable for people to be there again. They clean blood, shit, piss, semen, puke, and other more obscure bodily fluids. Someone just blew his head off with a shotgun? These guys roll up. A woman just killed her entire family with a kitchen knife? These are the guys you call. Pretty much everything you never want to see, this job is at. I feel like you have to be almost completely numb to emotions or just really good at compartmentalizing experiences to be able to do this job and not end up on their list of to-dos for the day. One of the crime scene cleanup companies I was looking at recommends you get a therapist if you decide to take the job. I mean, basically it seems like they're saying you're gonna get fucked up if you do this, so be prepared, which I think is a good thing. They're not sugarcoating it. And they're pretty much warning you it's very different from watching gore videos on Reddit or 4chan. Spankologist. 
Spankologists sometimes spank people to give them relief from stress and pent-up emotions, but it can also release endorphins and give you a sense of euphoria. Dr. Don is a spankologist in Burbank, California, who can perform professional-grade spankings. According to him, spanking can cure high blood pressure. I mean, why not? Why not? If your high blood pressure is related to stress and spanking relieves stress, why not? I can get behind it. I haven't seen anyone else who's a spankologist, so this might be the most obscure job on this list, which is why it's at the depths of the iceberg. It's such a specialized profession that its secrets are entrusted to one man, and it's up to him if he wishes to pass on the knowledge which he has gained from years of meditation and practice. Thanks for watching another one of my videos. If you like this video, please, please wash your taint. Scrub your balls, flush the toilet, wash your cum rags, and have a good day. As always, I'm fucking gay as shit.